Good afternoon, and thank you for hanging in here. Um, everybody, um, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, dear friends, I won't keep you long before lunch. Um, you've got quite a lot to go through, but I'll try to rattle through it quite uh, quickly, and thank you for the organizers for giving us a slot to talk to you today. I'm talking today very briefly about how we are developing scholarly communication from the Middle East, and we are developing it for the 21st century. And uh, to tell you a little bit about the importance of what we are doing, please welcome Richard Charkin quickly to the stage to give his, ins his insights into scholarly publishing and without him, uh, QScience.com would have never launched. Please, Richard. Uh, good, good afternoon. I realize with horror that I've been in the business of scientific publishing for 40 years. 1971 I started, uh, but I can safely say there has never been a more interesting time or a more interesting place to support scientists in their communication collaboration through technology. Um, there's never been more change and there's never been more need to work together. We've heard this last couple of days it's all about partnerships, and publishing is an integral part of scientific communication. But uh, Darren's going to talk briefly about that. But I just wanted to touch on two other aspects of scientific publishing, apart from peer-to-peer -peer scholarly publishing, which is vital. It is also vital to create a world population, not just here in Qatar, a world population of schools who understand and teach and educate and involve children in science. And we've got to take it up a couple of notches as well into the general public using whatever media, but books and magazines, TV, radio, to educate, help educate the world, understand science, or we'll all end up in an ivory tower. Publishing is central to communication, central to collaboration, and we are just so proud and happy to be involved in this place at this time with all our friends here. So thank you very much for allowing us to present. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Richard. And we heard this morning from Dr. Dr. Fatih that quality and innovation are the key pillars for all of us. And that extends to publishing as well. And I'd like to thank Dr. Fatih for his support of this venture. So with his words, pretty much, I didn't know his presentation, I'm going to focus on three things, or actually only one thing, it's innovations. It's innovations in QScience.com, it's innovations in scientific collaboration, and it's innovation in uh, uh, publishing models, and how we are responding to them, and how you all can get involved to build a high-quality publisher of peer-reviewed scholarly articles here in Qatar. So let's start with innovations on Q Science. Um, this was pretty much last year almost, the 13th of December 2010, when Buzz Aldrin gave Q Science um, lift up in a very memorable event. Um, and the Q Science team has grown considerably since then. We've been busy hiring some really important talents and important colleagues, which I'm very happy to work with and we are really proud to have here to build us up and to really work hard on actually making things happen. We are also an active uh, member of the International Scholarly Publishing Com Community, which is reflected by our memberships in various international organizations uh, which we are involved in, which we are really closely working with. But don't forget, we are just getting started as we are. To lay the foundations of this, we are climbing these mountains and working with a very high level and great international advisory board and the international advisory board will actually meet um, in next month here in Qatar where we are calling them all in. Here is, we are very happy to work with many people uh, of the local community but also of the international scholarly com community on this interesting venture. So what have we done in the last year? This is pretty much what the website looked like a year ago. It's a very journal-focused um, website. The website, if you call it up today, I took the screenshots probably last week during the uh, preparation of this, 
This is what the website looks today. It's much more article focused and we are working closely with our partners Adipon and Arias to really integrate the peer review management and the distribution of the content um, across, the, uh, across the site. All the access or all content on uh, qscience.com is open access. So I invite you to have a look at the site which is up and running and is integrated with Carter Foundation, QNRF and QF Research, Carter University and all the universities including Hamad and research institutions which we ha have here. And really all of them made this happen to grow. In the next month you will find uh, QNRS and actually as I was waiting I was just getting an email with the first screenshot uh, of the QNRS um, re re repository in the staging server. So it is really happening. We will have uh, these papers on there and we will be calling on you for your author submitted versions of the papers so we can upload them and build up an institutional re repository and marry this up with the current research which is going up. And I thought I'd share, you some in, share with you some of the innovations which you can find on the website. So um, very quickly, this is an article. If you click on the top right hand corner, you will be taken to an Arabic abstract. There's no other scholarly website which does that and also integrates Arab search into the website. You also will find probably the uh, most advanced uh, integration of Web 2.0 platforms. You can log in with Facebook, um, Twitter, with LinkedIn into the website and use the personalized features of the site. You can even go on the website and leave a comment under one of these articles and broadcast that out to your friends, to your colleagues, and really drive traffic into your article, your research, and start talking about the research which is published on qscience.com. To operate this, we really have to have something which is much more than just the website. This is just a boring screenshot of all the back ends which help us to connect really all the research into the, the scholarly uh, publishing community. And if you have submitted a paper or an abstract to the forum here, you will have used um, qscience.com and editorial manager, basically our peer review system, to um, submit. And that's a screenshot how all that works. And from last year's presentation and from last year's uh, research forum, we are tracking the downloads. We are tracking downloads of how often articles have been downloaded. We also track how often they have been tweeted about, how often they have been linked to, and how often they have been cited. And this article here is uh, the article uh, which had the highest downloads from last year's research forum. And if you check closely, there's a DOI which is citable in all international systems. So um, con congratulations to this research team of detection of human movement. So the key publishing innovations which we find on the qscience.com website are the Arabic abstracts, it's Arabic search, it's the most advanced social networking integration you can find at the moment on a scholarly publishing website, and also is post-review publication within 48 hours. Once an article has gone through peer review, it'll take us, it should really only take us 48 hours, might be one or two hours more, uh, to actually publish it live and have it live on the website for all the world to see and all the world to access and to read your science. So that's a key factor of what we are doing here. So let's talk quickly about uh, innovations which we are uh, working on in uh, scientific uh, collaborations and uh, to help uh, really communicate science. Uh, scholarly publishing really plays a key role in developing the knowledge economy. Let's look at the role scholarly publishers play as a platform to help disseminating content and making it seen. It was very interesting to see that this slide was actually, or this uh, screenshot was actually shown uh, yesterday in another presentation from uh, the uh, Berkeley National uh, Lab. And um, it shows how, um, how scientific co co collaborations on papers is based on Scopus data work across the continent. So you've got a very well-defined North America got a very defined Europe, you've got something going on in Latin America, you've got Japan on the right hand corner and China probably in 2011 will shine much brighter but the state is up to 2009, you've got India and then you've got around, let's see whether this works, around here, you've got a bit of a black hole and this is what we are trying to work with all of you to address, to really push publication and push quality publication into the world 
and connect this world, this part of the world, into the rest of the scientific research map. And how are we doing that? Um, we are announcing, we are running, and please contact us. You'll find our contact details on the website. We are running scientific writing workshops here in Qatar to help researchers to publish in international peer review journals. It doesn't necessarily have to be our journals. It would be nice. But uh, we are helping to really bring out the scientific um, essence of those articles, that everything is properly reported, properly cited, so it should make it easier to get, us to, to get your research published. So please tell everybody about that. And um, really, uh, this is a service which is available to everybody here in Qatar to really address that, that issue. We are also introducing in, these, in the next coming days something I'm really excited about. It's called um, QScience Review. And what QScience Review is, really a collaboration between the top scientists here and top journalists. It's going to be a regular feature and a regular issue. It's going to be in English and Arabic. And uh, we are working with some really good scientific journalists to re review some of the research which is going on here and bring that to a wider audience. And this is what it looks like, or what it's going to look like roughly, and it will be available in December 2010, and it will be in print. It won't just be online only, as everything else we are doing. So our key innovations in scientific collaborations are the editorial service for all researchers in Qatar. We are fostering publishing partnerships and really work with you to get your research out. And of course, QScience Review, which will highlight research achievements from Qatar. Now let's look, and this is the last part. You see I'm trying to get us to lunch quicker. Um, let's look at some key innovations in publishing models which are out there and which are happening right at the moment and how we are responding to it. So I think the key innovation, the one innovation we should focus on is called the rise of the multidisciplinary mega journal. Has anybody here about heard about PLOS One? PLOS One is the typical example of a multidisciplinary um, mega journal, and I've got some examples of that. The way it works, we do rapid peer review, we filter the research into subject areas afterwards, and we really focus on article metrics as a new starter It'll take us two or three years until we have an impact factor. But by tracking how often your article has been accessed, used, cited, and talked about, we can really combat that and provide you some key metrics which you can use when you say, OK, I published in QScience, it doesn't have an impact factor yet. But here it has been read by 1,500 people, and it's a really important piece of work. The other thing what we ask um, in a multidisciplinary mega journal is, is the science, um, is it scientifically rigorous research? Is it ethical? Is the research properly reported? And are the um, conclusions properly presented? The one thing which we don't ask is how important is the research and how relevant is it to others? And here's an, an example what the impact was there. This is data which our friend Mark Patterson, who is now setting up a journal with Max Planck, Howard Hughes, and Wellcome Trust, um, shared with us recently. Uh, PLOS One started modestly and uh, grew very, very quickly, but then it already it exploded at the moment, and uh, Mark is still amused about that, uh, when it started becoming an impact factor. And it really is the biggest driver of uh, PubMed at the moment. 1.5% of those articles will be in uh, PubMed, but then 900 plus articles in PLOS One get over 100 citations, and then there are 900 articles who get one or less citations. So really, it's becoming this big sea of articles, which they then filter out. The world is listening, and um, we uh, have launched QScience Connect, which actually is not just in the life sciences, which will be everything from architecture to zoology, where we are accepting submissions in all fields. It's peer-reviewed, it has clear article metrics, and I'm happy to say that the first five articles of QScience Connect went online yesterday. So go and see that and go and start submitting to QScience Connect. It's something really exciting. Because actually the um, publishing community is taking notice. This is a slide from Seth Mark Patterson at the SDM meeting in Frankfurt in October, where he listed all the other journals which are adopting this model and have been launched in 2010. And I'm really proud, you know, we are sitting there right between Elsevier and Wiley. They've got Bloomsbury Qatar Foundation journals. I mean, this is 
this is really nice. They are taking notice. And um, we, if you look at the list again, and I highlighted our journal here, what do all of these new starters have in common? It's quite simple. They all have no impact factor. And they all have to rely on clear article metrics to make this, to make this happen. So just think about it. Yes, we don't have the nature brand, but we have a Qatar Foundation brand. And we want to build a knowledge economy here, and you can all support this and Qatar Foundation and this growth of this by publish your research uh, with QScience. Just really, just really uh, take that in. And what we can help you with is connect all your research to the international com community because we are indexed, we are seen everywhere, we get submissions and access from 130 countries at the moment, and this should really help us to communicate what we are doing here out to the overall world. So with that, thank you very much, and I think I just managed to rattle something into 15 minutes. Uh, so visit us, talk to us, share your ideas with us, and we are really here to support you, and please tell everyone who could not make this session about QScience.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much indeed for a most stimulating and illuminating, uh, also a very innovative approach to publishing. Really, we are proud that this is happening here. So we have five minutes for questions. Um, yeah, don't go. So, any questions on all the the gentlemen here, and, and then a gentleman in the back over there. Microphone, please. Thank you. Well, my name is Mustafa Al Shawi. I'm associate dean at the University of Salford in the UK. Uh, to tell you the truth, the more I listen, the more I get impressed with the achievements in Qatar. Uh, and I can talk about this for two hours. But the things that I just saw uh, in the last 30 minutes is really fabulous. And you're setting the infrastructure uh, that is necessary to get Qatar on the map. And you're doing that in a proper way. As I said, if I talk, I need to move on to the, from the positive side and, and talk about something which possibly you haven't addressed. And I'm sure you're addressing it. I'm sure you're thinking of it. One thing is what Alan just said, I start from the last point, we said, well, uh, three years and we get an impact factor, ISI impact factor, I think you'll be lucky to do that. Uh, it takes much more than that. But that's a good thing. You, you, I'm, I think you're really doing a great job. And I'm sure you will, uh, in the next few years, you will have much more impact. But not the ISI impact factor. We'll talk about that anyhow uh, uh, during lunch. But the thing that really I'm talking about is two things, partnerships. From our experience, which I'm really responsible of partnerships in Salford, uh, what we found out is the success comes from bottom up. What we need is to motivate staff to get these partnerships, individual partnerships, and then grow them into strategic partnerships with, in, between institutions. Yes, you might need but, uh, top down just to motivate people, but the success of these uh, top down partnerships will not be that great. You can, for example, if you're thinking of strategic partnerships with uh, two or between two uh, high-level institutions in, for a particular area, yes, it will be a success. But really, the majority of it, I would say 90%, it should, but it should come bottom up. So th we should really encourage that. And, I'm, and you know, what I've heard over the, uh, the past two, uh, two days is really you're doing that, you're encouraging people to do that. The other thing is, you know, how would we achieve quick wins from what you built so far? That is something to build on the successes you've achieved. We should be thinking of quick wins. So, you know, to accelerate the process of putting Qatar on the map. Something that is, uh, you know, to think of in the next possibly few months and try to push something very quickly which attracts media all over the world uh, from what you're doing. So thank you very much for the good thing. Thank you. Would you like to comment? Uh... Yeah, just uh, on the... Um the activity at, uh, from the bottom up, as you said. Uh, of course, a pyramid is the most stable structure. And uh, as I said in my talk, you need to fight a war, you need soldiers, not generals. So we are 
engaged in developing these uh, partnerships. One uh, difficult situation that we encounter is that it does take time uh, to actually nurture uh, these partnerships to the point where they actually produce goods. Uh, because, for example, you get the money, you recruit, you get the equipment. That process takes six months to a year to actually for, for you to start doing the work. Uh, so you have to uh, accept that uh, in Qatar things are moving relatively fast compared to other places. But for us to see tangible results at a scale that we all hope and envisage to happen, it will take maybe three to four years. But it is happening. It is the, the, the base is being populated as we speak. No, I mean, I totally agree with what, uh, what, uh, what you are saying and, you know, talking about Imperfect. You might, you know, we are starting something from nothing, but with the best technologies and with the best, best practices which we, which, which we can find. And we are starting. Um, I think that's the, that's the Im, Im, important message. And the uh, recognition of that will follow, but at least we are starting something with that. Okay. Any more questions? Everybody's hungry. So we thank you very much indeed for your patience and we apologize for the delay. Thank you. Thank you.